I'd like to ask Trey Vassilo, a general partner at Kleiner Perkins, to join me on stage. Trey. Nice. Hi, nice to meet you as well. Uh, we'll probably have to make this quick since we're the last thing between uh, us well, and drinks. What is that? <laughs> um, so tell me a little bit about your background, where you're coming from, uh, and tell us what the Glass Collective is and why KP is committed to it. Great. So I am an embedded systems geek uh, through education at Stanford and um, spent some time actually developing consumer hardware products at IDEO, found my way into the entrepreneurial side of the world, started a, a wireless company called Good Technology. And for the longest time, I was kicking myself for studying hardware, um, you know, when the internet was booming around me. And I finally feel like my time has come because prior to, uh, well, the previous conversation was a lot about how venture folks don't like hardware we're starting to see that change. And it's changing for an, a number of reasons, just like what happened in software. A lot of the infrastructure has been commoditized, making it significantly easier to create a business without actually investing in building that infrastructure. Similar things are starting to happen in hardware. And so personally, where I'm spending a lot of my time is in a couple of areas that really are about connected devices. Um, and I, I really think about it as the natural evolution of mobility. Mm. This is a fantastic new platform and it's going to keep evolving and getting smaller and getting embedded in the world around us. And that means things from making our houses smarter like Nest, um, as well as the whole area of wearables. And so that brings us to Glass Collective. And I actually wore mine here today. You'll note that um, I wear mine in sunglasses mode only. Uh, <laughs> it, it is a very socially different thing and so you know I'm not the kind of person who's going to wear these in meetings um, but because I'm focused on this area I really wanted to dive into it and try and understand what's the big idea here so I've been wearing for them for about four weeks what did you discover um, so I actually read a blog post about this mm. and it was intended to be a little tongue-in-cheek and my point was if you can kind of swallow your pride and get over the fact that they look funny um, but just try and understand, I mean, they're, and Google's pretty upfront about this. Look, Moore's Law will continue to work, they will get smaller, they will get mm. better. But the big idea here is always on and hands-free. And that is a really powerful uh, notion, um, a UI switch. You, you, it applies not just to glass, but it applies to things like Pebble, which you guys heard from Eric earlier. Um, there's a lot of interesting activity that's going to take place on the wrist as well as on the head. Um, the brilliant thing about having this on my head mm. is the increase in productivity while I'm out and about and running around, not having to use my hands, um, and then the contextual nature of this OS that understands what I'm looking at, what I'm doing, and what information I likely need, is, was actually blow away. So I've, uh, I've been pleasantly surprised at some of the early utility, and this is without, I mean, this is like iPhone before the App Store, right? So here's this new phenomenon, it's super early, um, and... Uh, so the ideal target market was uh, busy working moms. Yeah. <laughs> well, that was part of yeah. the joke. I'm like, it goes yeah. well with my minivan, at least for now, so... Um, <sighs> I wonder if Google made a... The way they introduced the product, I think, has been uh, unfortunate, even given uh, the charitable uh, acceptance that these, this is an, you know, an early adopter product. They put out those videos, which if you've seen them, uh, as someone who's worn the, the Google Glass, I can tell you it in no way represents what the experience is like. And then they gave them to a bunch of fairly nerdy white males <laughs> who wore them in the shower um, exactly. or around yeah. Ted. <laughs> and um, I think it, it, it misrepresents the, a lot of the utilities that appear from it. That's a, yeah, and it's funny because the, the Google guys, once I, I showed them my blog piece that was all about, you know, hey, the killer app is really for parents. You yeah. know, who needs this more? Who needs something that is hands-free more than a busy parent? And, and they loved it. And they actually do believe that once we can get beyond the stigma of how it looks and, and beyond that early adopter phase, there's a whole power market of, of people out there. So keep, KP is an interesting venture firm in that something that many venture capitalists say that they seed ideas and support entrepreneurs and 
provide much more than money. I think it really is true in the case of Kleiner Perkins. And in this case, one of the things the Glass Collective is meant to do is to seed the entrepreneurial ecosystem with the idea of developing applications for the, uh, the Glass platform. Has it been difficult to convince entrepreneurs that this is a platform, that there's an SDK arriving, and <laughs> this is a cool thing to work well, for? Well, let me just say, I think everyone recognizes that it's incredibly early. Yeah. Uh, we announced this prior to the SDK even being available, mm. and I think at the time there were only 50 units in you mm. know, people's hands. So it really was a, hey, this is coming, mm. and, and the, the idea behind the Glass Collective is to get a group of venture firms, Andreessen Horowitz, Google Ventures, and Kleiner Perkins, and basically all lock our arms and say, yeah, we know it's early, but this is a big new platform idea about you know, new UI ideas around mobility that we think is going to be, you know, the early stages of something that's gonna be very important. So we have been pouring through many, many, many um, you know, initial sort of applications and ideas and you know, we plan to keep doing that. Might there be a glass fund in the way there was a KP uh, app fund? <laughs> the I fund. Yeah. Right now, this is just, it, it's an initiative uh -huh. that, where we're all collectively working together. Okay. Um, what kinds of applications do you think that uh, Glass might be well suited for? Yeah, so we've been spending a lot of time trying to think about, okay, given there is a certain social awkwardness, um, which happens with all new products, sure. frankly. Um, you know, I, th I heard an interesting example used recently uh, you know, everyone's worried about the camera and, and all that stuff. Mm. Someone reminded us that when caller ID was launched, everyone was up in arms. Mm -hmm. You know, oh, how could they send my number out? Well, today it's entirely the opposite. If a call is blocked, you're not going to answer the phone. Um, it just takes a while for those things to, to naturally progress. So, um, uh, oh, I got off. So, the specific so question. What kinds of applications do you think so the, it might be good for? Yeah. So. Um, Obviously, they're going to be vertical applications mm. where it's not about how you look, it's about the utility of mm. the product um, that we think make a ton of sense. Now, we don't have any, you know, there are very few developers who have these right now who are starting to build those, but the feedback from certain industries, you know, take a PG&E, for example. You've got linemen up on a pole who are trying to diagnose a problem. They can have their glasses on, be looking at the problem, and be in real time having you know, basically a you know, Google Hangout conversation with someone who can see what they're doing and guide them. Mm. So those types of applications, um, uh, folks are really, really excited about. So verticals? Yeah. Verticals. Uh, on the consumer side, um, you know, there's an explosion of uh, risk devices and applications um, on the fitness side of things, mm -hmm. the quantified self movement. Um, the interesting thing there is that it, it's still early days, and uh, it's. It, let me just back up and say one of our other companies is Nest, um, mm -hmm. which I love the example of Nest. It's that smart thermostat for two reasons. One, it shows you that the opportunity to innovate is everywhere. You know, sometimes people think that uh, everything's already been innovated. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, th there's nothing left to fix. There's stuff all around you. Stuff that is seemingly as lame as a thermostat, these guys came, reinvented, and now they have a whole new paradigm That's around the home. Well. Um, but they also elevated the conversation from, instead of measuring real-time kilowatt hours, hmm. they changed how you interacted with your house. The same thing has to happen with all these fitness watches mm -hmm. in the same way that I don't really want to post how many steps I took every day. It's not that engaging, it's not that interesting but with new sensors um, and new wearable technology and new interfaces, you know, how can they up-level that and help me live smarter, better, healthier? I think one of the themes of the last two days around mobility has been these are really distributed applications. And the device almost disappears. Mm -hmm. And what we want are different ways to interface with these distributed applications in different contexts of which the watch uh, the, the, the glass might be an example. I'm going to take some questions uh, from the audience, but before I do, for those who haven't worn glass, and can I see a show of hands who's tried it on yet? So a few of you, not all of you. 
perhaps you could describe uh, just yeah. what it's like because it's sure. not like the video at all. <laughs> well, so, so the first thing is that it is not a virtual reality experience. I'm not looking at an overlaid, you know, uh, digital interface on top of what I see. It's a very uh, easily accessed but highly deliberate look up and to the right to see a screen. So. If you think I'm paying attention to you, I'm paying attention to you because yeah. when I look at that screen, you can see my eyes look up, I look away. Yeah. And so it's not completely, uh, you know, it's not, it's not sneaky in that sense. Yeah. It's still very deliberate, but the beauty is it is hands-free. So the thing that, the use case that blew mm -hmm. me away was when I'm driving around in my car. Um, and my favorite examples, I had three kids in the car, <laughs> all were screaming, the radio was on, and so I was like, oh, perfect test case. Let me, let me see how this works. <laughs> so my car, the, the light had come on, I needed to schedule maintenance, so you know, I said, okay, Glass, Google Toyota Redwood City. And it heard me, that was the first thing. I was like, oh my goodness, <laughs> didn't use that word. I was like, this is crazy, oh, all that background noise. And it, the voice recognition is fantastic, partly because it's sitting on your head. So it's able to discern what you're saying versus mm. blaring radio and kids screaming. Um, it immediately looked up Toyota Redwood City, put it up on the screen. I looked, saw that it was it, clicked. Um, it said call, clicked again and called. And I had my appointment scheduled without ever really having to take my eyes off the road. Um, and it was incredibly useful. Um, the audio is worth discussing as well. It's also not what you think it's going to be. It essentially vibrates into the, the bone of your, that's a bad description, but it, it's a very intimate noise in your ear. Yeah, it's, it's actually my least favorite part of the product right yeah. now. Um, interesting for certain use cases in that, so directions, if when I get into my car and I use this to navigate, I actually love it because I never have to take my eyes off the road. And if there's a turn coming up, you can hear it kind of whisper in your ear is how yeah. I describe it because it's not really audible to anyone else, but I can hear it. Um, but if for some reason I miss what it tells me, all I have to do is look up and go, oh, oh yeah, okay, great. But the road is always in my peripheral vision. Mm -hmm. um, the other thing I should mention, the thing that I was most concerned about and, and was really feared as a driver you know, when you look close up and then look far away and that changing of the focal distance can be really disorienting, they have it set so that you're actually focused out in infinity. So it, you're really just looking up at your visor and it's just up in your visor. So that it really is a pleasant experience to drive and look up and then look back down. So actually, the, almost the opposite of what the video commercial suggests, the audio is actually much more, and to me, disturbingly intimate. It's right in your head. <laughs> and the video is not intrusive at all. It floats above your field of vision yes. there, which is so bad advertising from Google. Um, questions from the audience, uh, from, um, from a partner at KP? Ooh, um, a few. By the way, for the last two days, I apologize. I can literally see nothing <laughs> at the back of the room with all these <laughs> lights. So if I've not been calling upon you, you've been staying at the back. Um, signal to the people with the mics. Um. Hello, Sean Case from AJA Video. Um, based on what I've seen, Google has specified a very minimal interface with just some little notifications that come up and they talk to a, a Google server. Mm -hmm. In the meantime, um, people have jailbroken the device, rooted it, yep. um, found that it runs Android, put all kinds of great applications on it. How do you reconcile those two from a venture capital perspective? You know, you don't want to fund something that takes somebody two days to develop, I assume. Um, the seed of a good idea sometimes can take two, two days. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, uh, you know, ultimately you look at the utility of the solution and whether it's, there's a lot of stuff that people want to build that sounds really interesting that you just can't do today with the current set of APIs. That it'll take a while before Google is at the point where they can open up the APIs to do that. So, you know, that's one of the reasons why we're doing the Glass Collective. So we're in the middle of those conversations and we can have a better sense of timing and is this something that's going to be doable or not and when. Um, you know, it's, there's, I think it, we don't really even know all the interesting use cases of how mm. this will be used, but I'll give you right. one a great example. 
there's a company that came in and they had a translation app um, and they hacked it and put it on glass. And the fascinating thing was I could wear these glasses and be walking around in China and look at a sign, you know, take a picture, do whatever, and I would see the English overlay over the Chinese words. Hmm. And that is a really powerful use case that couldn't really exist without that glass. I mean, it exists on the phone. It's just much harder and very mm -hmm. different to use. And so that's one example of what I hope will be many, many examples of types of products. Cool. Um, over here. Uh, yeah, so um, actually you stole my question, actually. Uh, my, uh, I was going to say that the DOD has already been deploying that kind of, that kind of use case, right? So you, uh, the soldier is uh, in real-time situation yep. um, and then needs that immediate translation. Um, can you give an insight to where uh, you see the glasses evolving to? Obviously, there are there is some other perspective I have that where I can actually in 2009 I gave it in my keynote uh, as the eighth screen in our lives, right? The, the glasses um, because Motorola was shipping that product uh, to the DoD for some time. Um, where do you think that? The glass, it can't stop at the glasses, right? Okay. <laughs> um, the contact uh, lenses? Yeah, kind of correct. So I, was so going to, I was going to say, yeah, so, you, yeah, so, so we, we have the mesh of work, uh, wireless technology, um, uh, information technology, and all that sensors. Yeah. yeah, and in fact, when I think about um, kind of the, the next evolution of mobile, I really think about much more than just glass. I, I really think about kind of wearables in general. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and even to connected devices and smart infrastructure, things like Nest. Um, and so I think it's about to get pretty darn exciting over the next year or so here. Uh, Google, it, Google loves to, to show their vision and come out early with products, mm -hmm. but guaranteed that every you know, large consumer hardware company is working on a suite of really interesting new products that you know, whether they're gonna be watches or glass, um, there are going to be a lot of different use cases that fundamentally really get to the always-on, hands-free nature um, of the interface to your phone. Having to pull this thing out of your pocket and interrupt and turn it on is actually yeah. a big thing. And so, um, so I expect the watch side of the world to, to get really exciting. A lot of people are wearing them, um, and uh, you know there's rumors flying around about who's going to be launching watches when, and so I expect that to get pretty exciting. I mean, eventually this stuff disappears, essentially, right? It simply accesses the network. It's it's in our watches, it's in our contact lenses, it's in our clothes, it's on the the screens of our cars. So one of my other theses is mm. that um, you know there will be tablets everywhere. Yeah. Just like people said, you know, you know, memory will be, storage will be free. Mm -hmm. Tablets are effectively, as we've learned, going to be free. Yeah. So think about the different types of applications <coughs> and things you can do when you have a free, dedicated tablet to a specific application. It changes tablets a lot. Might be, they, they'll be as thin as the willow glass we saw on day one. Um, perhaps one more question before I close the event down. The new up car had the last quote oh, over here, please. There was one last question. You were the very last question of the <laughs> of the event, so no pressure, but it has to be particularly smart. It'll be very short, though. Uh, I'm Mila. I'm from Opino, and I wanted to know if you had tried the glasses with kids, with children, and <laughs> what it's been like. Absolutely. So that was actually my big motivation. So aside from being incredibly productive in my minivan. Um, the, uh, I amassed well over a thousand photos and videos of my children <laughs> um, in that period of time. And I'm an avid photographer. I love taking photos. You know, I've got a Nikon camera, um, so I'm, I'm really into it. But the, I've been able to take photos and videos of my kids from perspectives that you can't humanly get when you pull out your phone and then the whole scene changes. Because um, it has an observation effect, right? Yeah, yeah, you pull out your phone and then they start hamming yeah. it up or they stop doing what they're doing. That's nice. And so I've, yeah, I've taped numerous just awesome stories um, that they were talking about. I have trampoline videos, you know, just tons of fun stuff. So it, it, it's the more boring answer, but the reality is a huge part of it has been capturing kid moments. That's very cool. Ladies and gentlemen, Trevor Sauer. And thank you, Mia, for that last question. <laughs> thank you.
Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Small. Thank you. <laughs>